come in. Who are you? Chris Dale, BBFC, TTFN, Randomizer General, apparently. I'm the new T-Boy. Get out. Get out! You too, Molyneux! See you down there, Clayton. Get out! Get out! <laughs> oh, I've always wanted to do that. Is there uh, any particular reason? Oh, does there really need to be? Anyway, Molyneux... Sir! Stop doing that! Anyway, how's about you pressing the old button on the randomizer for me today, huh? Well, thank you, sir. That's it. Oh, you know what I really want today, Molyneux? You want five-foot gates fitted to your drive with electronic locks operated from the house. No, that's the second thing I want. No, what I want today for Pod 60 is a lovely surprise and... Oh, Molyneux. Oh, 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 Molyneux. This is going to make quite a few people very happy. In fact, I'd go so far as to say it might even bring them deep joy. Excellent work. Well... Thank you, sir. Shall I tell them what it is? I think you ought to. Okay, well, can you remember the last time we had a new series on the randomizer? No, sir. No, it's been a while, but finally, we at last have our very first episode of The Secret Service. <gasps> oh, what could possibly make this moment any more beautiful? Can I get you a drink of water, sir? Yes, that would do it. Thank you. And speaking of water, today's episode has rather a lot of it. Here's a question of miracles. Well now, I had... Honestly, I had genuinely forgotten that there was one series we had yet to see a single episode from. I know, um... Saltwater input reading. Technically, Twizzle is, is another we haven't seen an episode from yet, but we only have the one to watch, so that kind of doesn't count. Yeah, I had forgotten... We Pressure haven't normal. seen any of the 13 episodes of the Secret Service yet. What a... What a sad, and terrible, disaster, scraping of old folly main miserum this was. So, we're here now. We've got uh, a question of miracles for Pod 60. Well, coming up for our first 250 hours on service and not a sign of trouble. Shouldn't you cross your fingers, knock on wood or something? I don't see why. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that absolutely nothing can go wrong. In fact, if anybody thought that something could go wrong, I don't know what it's... Oh, no! Who could have predicted that? That the desalinating thingies is going splody. Oh, never good. But instantly, I'm... I'm sort of set into the same mindset that I am with, um... With watching episodes of Joe 90. Just something about this late century 21 puppet era... Aesthetic. It's just, I really like it. I really like the the slightly more realistic environments coupled with the uh, the more realistic heads and the slightly less caricature-y voice performances, if that makes sense. Um, and I have a bit of a an up and down relationship with this series, um, with the downs mostly being that I. I don't look at it all that often. Um, I loved it when I first saw it as, well, I was going to say as a kid, as a teenager really. I, I caught it on the tape training network when I was about 15, 16, and yeah, I, 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 I really liked the show, despite it being absolutely daffy and off the wall. As I've grown older, I do look at it and think, who on earth was this aimed at? It's wonderful, it's charming, it's lovely, but who did they think was going to watch it? But that is, in and of itself, part of the charm of this show. It is so nuts. It is so... It's almost like a passion project. Yeah. Just... Go on. It, just in how... Continue. I don't know. How Stanley Unwin-centric it is. It, it's just like J Jamie... Not Jamie... Jamie's that other guy. Jerry just wanted to work with Stanley Unwin. Let's make a show about him. Does it have to make sense? No, of course not. As long as we've got him, we can make him a, a parish priest with a shrinking ray and a secret agent. Double life. It's fine. We can't afford to take the risk. It's my risk, Hartley, not yours. I say we go ahead and buy, unless anything happens to the other experimental plans the British have in operation. Port Trenick and Bogosa. 
So now we've caught up with uh, all of the backstory we need, and we have a long zoom in on this guy that we're not yet meant to suspect of being the, uh, the sneaky traitor, but just to spoil it for you, he's a sneaky traitor. Now we're over to the other, the second desalination plant, Lagosa. Unless it was a design fault. Unless the plant does overheat at 250 hours. Unless I'm just really bad at my job. Yeah, this is uh, the guy who designed the the plants, um, Mr. Um, Williams. I, I nearly forgot his name. Uh, played by the Captain Grey puppet. And I do like the way you you see the Captain Scarlet cast reused in this show and Joe 90. I think there isn't an episode of this show that doesn't have at least one captain somewhere in there. Two. One. And this episode, of course, has two, but we'll get onto that later. Oh, and Colonel White! Colonel White was in the opening scene. I forgot all about him. You wouldn't appreciate that. Ah, and plant number two has also gone splody. And it's gone splody very prettily. Oh, even though you could see in that last tank explosion, there was a, a plastic bag, I guess, containing the explosive charge that um, was quite visible there. The third and last experimental desalinating plant here in England at Port Trenick. There are a lot of foreign companies who would like to slow down British sales of desalination plants. And I presume our job is to find out how it's done. And this... These two central characters, Father Unwin and, and Matthew, they're a lovely pair, and I like how. But you believe it's how, on the one hand, you have Father Unwin, who his approach to the whole spy thing is very casual and laid back. I think in the final episode, the the quote he he ends the I think the whole series on is slow and steady wins the race, not the one who sets the pace. And that's just like, that's such a charming little, um, Still getting your order. I don't know, motto for, for a Jerry Anderson hero to have. You know, you're so used to the, the Scott Tracys and the Troy Tempest, they're charging around in these super cool machines, and it's ultra fast, high action, and here comes Father Unwin pootling along, oh, slow and steady wins the race. And he actually, he actually succeeds, which is lovely. And then, of course, coupled with that, you have Matthew, who is there to handle all of the, um, the action stuff and the um, the very little uh, violence and, and gunplay that goes on in this series. It's a lovely combination, and I think both Stanley Unwin and Gary Files. There's a really nice dynamic between the two of them. Stopping them is another. Quite so, Matthew. And for that, we shall need some assistance. That's your mission, Blake. But how can I assist them if I don't even know who they are, sir? This is Agent Blake of the Bishop. Um, this is the Bishop, by the way, is um, British Intelligence Service Headquarters Operation Priest. This is a subdivision of British intelligence that apparently is dedicated exclusively to the whole Father Unwin project, uh, despite it not really being big enough to justify a whole separate department on its own, especially since we see here. We have Agent Blake, who clearly doesn't know anything about the whole Father Unwin setup at all. You are to take it at precisely nine. It's very strange. And Blake is, of course, played by the Captain Scarlet puppet, who they've just given a pair of glasses and uh, a change of hair colour to brown, and they expect people to um, to not notice him. I think it's more of the uh, the sort of Clark Kent type thing, you know, it doesn't work when he puts on glasses, you know who he really is, and it's the same with Captain Scarlet, of course. And here we have a, uh, a naughty submarine being signalled to out at sea by a naughty traitor engineer guy. Actually, this shot of the submarine, and I think the submarine itself comes from Thunderbirds, Atlantic Inferno, it was reused in the Captain Scarlet White as Snow, but that shot of it surfacing and being signalled to from the shore was from a Joe 90 episode, Business Holiday. Which also explains why, for the rest of this episode, the submarine looks a little bit different, because uh, it, I think in the, that stock footage it has some um, World Navy markings, and in the rest of the episode it doesn't. <laughs> Quickly, Matthew, conceal yourself. 
So Matthew has now been shrunk, um, but before I can get in the case, oh, Mrs. Appleby has come to, uh... He's gone again. Well, stick her nose in. She she never really contributed much to this series. I know it was kind of... She was more a, a, a mechanism to deliver this running joke of uh, she doesn't know what's going on and she doesn't like Matthew. But as a character, she's kind of redundant. And it's such a shame as well that this series, for all its charm and... Uh, and things that it gets right, and I think it, it, it very often gets things right by accident rather than design. Um, one of the genuine absolute flaws of it is the uh, lack of female characters. I think you can count on one hand the number of female characters there are across the entire series. So Sylvia Anderson doesn't really have a lot to do in this show. Well, Matthew, I think, uh, I think even less than the not very much she had to do in show 90. Another sandwich, Matthew. No. Thank you, Father. This one's more than enough for me. Ah, Matthew, I was forgetting your diminished stature. Oh, poor old Matthew. That's a lovely, enduring image from the show, just Matthew with the giant sandwich. Um, does make you wonder why they don't give him a packed lunch before they shrink him. Mr. Blake? Yes, sir. I was warned to expect you. Straight you and your band of rebels? You're going to overthrow the Federation, are you? Well, good luck with that. Yeah, this is uh, Blake's just arrived at the Port Trenick desalinating plant in Sam Louver's like car. Rude cup of tea on a hot day, Matthew. And I love this. Just remember to put an egg cup in the case. Father Unwin has given Matthew a cup of tea, but it's a full-size cup of tea, and you just think, well, before a major important right. spying operation, don't hand your miniaturized operative a full-size cup of tea. Otherwise, we're running a risk of um, a, a, a fairly major scalding incident here, which is the last thing you need when you're uh, combating naughty uh, foreign agents. the perimeter guards. Had all alarm systems rechecked. This time we've covered everything. Blood decompression chambers. Now, I was looking at the the script of this episode um, Open hatches. last week, and what's interesting is that much of this second half of the episode wasn't written to take place in the order in which you see on the screen. There's quite a few major differences in terms of uh, particularly when certain characters arrive to do things. The timeline of events is quite different in the script. Um, Blake arrives at the base before Unwin and Matthew. Uh, the frogmen are, are out there sabotaging the pipeline way earlier than, than we see them do it on screen. And yet, despite the fact that the order in the second half of this episode is very different to what's written, somehow it all sort of fits together just as well, almost as if it was written that way to begin with. You wouldn't know that anything had changed here. So now the naughty uh, frogmen from the naughty man's submarine have just thrown a bomb at the pipeline, which is... Um, What's the situation? Mission accomplished. Good work. Which has uh, split the... Metal gauze filter covering the uh, pipe. So now anything can get in. Luckily, Matthew has uh, changed into his swimming gear, um, which thankfully we don't actually see him doing on screen because that would be a very odd image of this um, little shrunken guy stripping down to his undies on the beach. And for some reason, he seems to already know that he's going to need a net to block to, to repair the damage that's been done to the There's pipe. There's no technical reason why it shouldn't pass the 250-hour mark safely. This is Captain Scarlet is now in the control room. He's going to take a tablet. He's also wearing a very fine pink shirt, by the way. Oh, what's wrong with that man? Oh, no. He's collapsed. Get a doctor, quick. No, Mr. Williams, you won't need a doctor. For Captain Scarlet will recover. It may take time, but I feel certain he'll recover and continue the fight against the Mistrons. It's a shame you couldn't have the Colonel White Puppet in the same scene as Captain Scarlet to deliver that, that little uh, to the end of episode, he's going to be alright kind of thing. Because, you know, it is... You can look at the reused Captain Scarlet characters in this show, and although you recognise Captain Grey, Captain Ogre, whoever... You don't necessarily think, oh, it's the same guy with Scarlet. Because there is that that greater association. The show was named after him, after all. It is, you can't look at Blake and not see Scarlet. Um, which kind of makes things like this. Blood chambers. In the Secret Service where he's playing a 
a junior agent who really doesn't know what's going on most of the time. Uh, very funny. Pulse failing. And it's even funnier now with, you know, Captain Scarlet has collapsed. Who do we call to examine him? We'll just get the world president to come and have a look at him as well. That's fine. This man needs is a priest. It's, I love, I, I love the whole idea of the, the Century 21 puppet repertory company where you see the same faces over and over and over. And I know there was an element of that in Thunderbirds from time to time, but it was so, so obvious here and so you know, blatant. They didn't even try to hide it, that it almost became a part of the show you look forward to. Oh, there's so-and-so and there's such-and-such. -such. Anyway, Father Unwin has just been stopped by... Hello there! A motor enthusiast and one of uh, Excuse me, I'm I, I find this scene just utterly charming and lovely. Yeah, a genuine model T. Uh, well, you see the colour, that's wrong. Any colour, just as long as it's black, old Henry Ford used to say. Because this now, is so far removed from the worlds of Captain Scarlet and Joe 90, you would not have a um, mustachioed motor enthusiast saying hello there in, in Captain Scarlet because, you know, Black would murder him. He just wouldn't fit into that world. But here it's like, you know that the whole world of the Secret Service is populated by characters like that. That and, and dodgy foreign agents from uh, indeterminate countries. Lovely. I thought all hospitals had priests. No, we've got a doctor. We've got several, as a matter of fact. What we <laughs> I love this gate. Priest. Guard as well. I think it's the, no, no, the David Healy that. voice. I haven't lost a priest. I'm trying to find one. Coupled with uh, this puppet. Me, uh, this puppet yeah, hold on a moment. This is was urgent. well he, he appeared in the very first scene of the Mistrons. He was Lieutenant Straight Dean on. aboard the Zero X uh, MEV. But the you, my son. the face the has this sort of um slightly confused um A priest. A father Yeah, slightly confused expression um which i think works really well in the first scene in, in the mistrons when you see him and he's listening to the mistron threat and the look on his face is just sort of oh my god what have we done but equally it works really well in the secret service where he's playing these subordinate characters who are just having so much pressure piled on them it's such a lovely fit for the the character it must have been so much fun to to be presented with a script and then have to choose which puppet from the repertory company would play each role. There's not much time. It's lovely. Complete seclusion, please. Anyway, Father Unwin has now been led into the control room of the desalinating plant. Uh, this is so he can pass on instructions from Matthew. So now the frogman has released a torpedo into the pipeline. But luckily, Matthew's net has successfully stopped it. Um, Bomb secure, Father. And this but image of uh, the... Hmm. The red-tipped torpedo. Not unless the infra um, is turned off. The pump is sort of... rhythmically trying to push then its way through way. the net guarding the pipeline. Um, you need, Father. Just let us know. Does anyone else get a slightly sort of... Um, you know? You know what I'm getting at? I'm not going to say it, but yeah. Is it just me, or is this image of the, the torpedo rolling in and out a bit, uh, a bit like that? Pump shut down. You've already saved the plant. If necessary, the pipe can be repaired. And this is another interesting aspect of the Matthew character, that he... Couldn't have known. He often does his job, you know, saves the day as much as anyone would reasonably expect him to do, and he's like, no, 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 I want to save it even more. It's not enough that I've one, stopped the bomb from getting into the pipe. Oh, hello, Captain Magenta. Uh, I, I've got to get it away from the pipe. Um, and there's a few times he does that in the course of the series, which is very, uh, very endearing. Even though he's like the smallest of the Super Mario Nation heroes, he's still, he's still going to be as brave as Scarlet and the rest of them. Well, I'm not sure how exactly he knows where to dump the missile. Was it just luck that he happened to point it in the direction of the enemy submarine? Because there's nothing to indicate that he knew it was there. But he hit it anyway. Well done, Matthew. So the Port Trenick desalinating plant is saved. Father, how did you know? How does one ever know, my son? Oh, I'm... 
Where am I? And the uh, How do you explain that? tablet that the bishop gave Blake was timed to wear off at exactly the point when the day had been saved. I think they're coming up now, Father. Perhaps you can arrange a reception committee? Half an hour ago, this man was on the point of death. It's incredible. Now his breathing and his pulse rate are back to normal. It's... it's a miracle. No, 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 it's just he's indestructible. He's always going to do this. You know, his show is over and he's still playing the whole miraculous recovery card. Anyway, that was the Secret Service Question of Miracles. And yeah, I I really like that one. I think it's um, probably a stronger episode actually than, than A Case for the Bishop, which was the one they opened with. It's got that same... It feels more like a traditional Super Mario Nation show than some of the other ones. There isn't as much live action here um, and you know there was a lot of live action filming with the real Stanley Owen and it never matched up all that well with the puppet stuff here there's just the right balance of live action stuff as much as we really need to and the puppetry and models in you know the same sort of setting as we'd see Captain Scarlet or Joe 90 in the you know power plant nuclear base here we have a desalinating plant it's the same industrial complex type environment that we would often see in those other shows. And, um, yeah, you throw into that your little parish priest and his uh, tiny friend. And it's, it's always going to be a mad show. But for this episode at least, yeah, oodles of charm from our very first Secret Service episode on The Randomizer. Oh.